At University of Virginia Health System, we're for sharing the latest health information from top minds to keep you and your family healthy. With UVA Health System Radio, here's Melanie Cole. Huntington's disease is one of the most common genetic disorders in the United States, affecting more than 250,000 Americans. My guest is Dr. Madeline Harrison. She's the director of the UVA Huntington's Disease Program, recognized as a center of excellence by the Huntington's Disease Society of America. Welcome to the show, Dr. Harrison. Tell us, what is Huntington's disease? Huntington's disease is a hereditary neurodegenerative disorder, um, meaning that it is inherited and causes uh, loss of brain cells that result in a number of symptoms that progress over time. And what age do you typically see the onset? Uh, It's more variable than we originally thought, but most typically um, the symptoms become apparent somewhere between the ages of 35 and 55. So what causes it? Is there a genetic component? Are there certain risk factors people can be aware of? Um, It is um, a genetic disorder so that the principal risk factor is um, coming from a family with Huntington's disease. Um, They've identified the specific change in in the gene that causes the disorder. Um, It's a a specific expansion, and it's passed from parent to child so that each child of an affected individual has a 50% chance of inheriting the gene. So if a parent had that, you, do you recommend a genetic test? Do they need a genetic test to say whether they have that gene or not? Well, the genetic test is, is highly specific and will certainly indicate if they have the gene. Um, about 95% of the time, um, the mutation is very specific and is in, um, has a specific features. It's called a CAG re- repeat expansion, so it has a certain number of, ex- of repeat sequences that will result in the disease. Deciding to have genetic testing is a very individual um, decision uh, because the, the, you can have, you have the gene from birth, but the symptoms may not appear until well into midlife as we discussed. Um, so, so for diagnostic purposes, it's very helpful, but the clinical f- symptoms are what actually indicate that the disease has begun. So what are the symptoms of Huntington's disease, and, you know, when, when do they appear? What do you notice? So it's variable, um, but there are three areas that are affected in the majority of individuals at some point along the course of the disease. And often the first changes are subtle changes in cognitive efficiency, um, ability to organize information. Uh, sometimes there are mood and personality changes early on. Um, the most characteristic symptoms are changes in um, motor function. So people develop extra involuntary movements called chorea is the most common, um, and also difficulty coordinating movements necessary for um, simple tasks, for walking, uh, for uh, using do, performing coordinated tasks with your hands. And so those are the symptoms that are the most definite indications um, that the disease has started. So these are movement disorders, and what about cognitive disorders or or psychiatric? Are there any others that go along with these? Yes, there certainly are. That the um, there's a very high incidence of psychiatric disorders, which can be can really take any form. Um, most common are what we call mood disorders. So people may become depressed. Um, there's a there's a high rate of serious depression, um, even suicide in the illness. Uh, often people who are very even-tempered can become irritable unexpectedly and unpredictably. Um, but these are fortunately very treatable symptoms. The cognitive changes are, are not, they are really organization and information handling. Uh, it's not as much of a memory problem as, say, something like Alzheimer's that people are more familiar with. But it, it certainly can create difficulties at home and at work, uh, with, with, particularly with complex tasks. Um, So what treatments are available for Huntington's disease? If you start to notice some of these symptoms, cognitive disorders, movement disorders, can there be something done to slow the progression, or is it symptom management? What kind of treatments are available? Well, currently we're in, um, what we have available are are treatments for symptom management. 
And fortunately, we can um, generally very effectively manage the mood or psychiatric symptoms using the same treatments that are successful in other settings, the same antidepressants that um, are useful in a wide range of, of conditions are helpful here, for example. And similarly for some of the other symptoms. We can also help suppress the um, extra movements if they're causing problems. Uh, they, sometimes they're very visible but not limiting the person. But we do have treatments, and the only FDA-approved treatment for Huntington's disease is actually directed at the chorea um, uh, component of the disease. For the cognitive, we don't have specific treatments, but there's a lot of workarounds and strategies that we, that we work closely with physical and occupational therapy to help people manage um, effectively in spite of some of these limitations. What we don't have yet is neuroprotective diseases, uh, therapies, or what we call disease-modifying therapies, which slow, could slow the progression of the disease, but there's very active research going on worldwide into promising treatments that would actually give us the ability to slow down or, or one day, we hope, prevent the development of the symptoms. And so tell us a little bit about what UVA does to help patients with Huntington's disease, Dr. Harrison, and are the family members involved? Because I would imagine this is a difficult disease both for the patient and for the family members involved. Um, Well, that's absolutely correct. And the family members are very much involved. It's really a team approach um, between the professional team and the, 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 the affected individual and their family or caregivers. And so we have a, um, a monthly clinic that, uh, with, with participation by a ner- um, staff from neurology, myself and, and I, a nurse practitioner and another neurologist. We now recently have a psychiatrist who's joined us. Um, there's a physical therapist, occupational therapist, speech-language pathologist. Our genetic counselor is there. And we have neuropsychology services available as well for both counseling and for cognitive assessments. So in the monthly clinic, um, the the fam, patient and family arrive, and they're seen um, by each of the professionals in the course of a morning or afternoon visit and um, to help assess where they are functionally, what they need for safety, what medications they may need to help manage their symptoms, and to assist them with planning and um, resource um, utilization. And I did neglected to mention a very important member is our social worker, who, who works with families before and after clinic to get the kind of help they need. So we have all this in one visit at one place, and um, I'm fortunate to have had a team that's been working, many of them have been working together uh, for close to 15 years doing this now. It sounds like a very multi, multidisciplinary approach and really very complementary and, and would help the families. Give us your best advice for patients with Huntington disease or someone that they love might be suffering from this disease? Well, I think the most important advice I would give you would be to see someone who has experience with Huntington's disease. Although there are you know, estimates of, as you mentioned, close to 200,000 people with or at risk for Huntington's disease, um, it's still not a disorder that most physicians are familiar with. Um, it's certainly not in terms of the day-to-day management. So I think it's very important to... Um, get advice from from someone who has specialized experience with Huntington's disease. And many movement disorders physicians um, are in a position to offer good advice. And there are um, centers around the country with specialized teams, both the HDSA centers and um, other specialty clinics. So I think that there are there's more and more available um, to patients and families. Um, the HDSA also has a network of support groups, which can be you know, critically important, particularly for the caregivers. Um, and then I think, you know, working with the team and working with partnering with the local physicians to make use of that expertise can make a, a big difference in how well people manage with, with the disorder. Thank you so much, Dr. Madeline Harrison, the director of the UVA Huntington's Disease Program. For more information, you can go to UVA Health. Dot com. That's uvahealth.com. You're listening to UVA Health System Radio. I'm Melanie Cole. Have a great day.